So Aaron, we've now reached one of my favorite parts of the, of yeah. the, of the show, uh, essentially covering some miscellaneous but random topics, but very, very important issues to talk about. Definitely. And of course, sharing his thoughts, his opinions, and of course, sharing the Islamic jurisprudential aspect of these topics is um, His Eminence Sayyid uh, Ali and Nawab. Really appreciate your time. Assalamu alaikum Sayyidna. Assalamu alaikum 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 so today's uh, discussion is centered around remembering the dead um, and we are blessed um, in our school of thought where we, you know, have dedicated, dedicated acts and, you know, um, and obviously, you, inshallah, you can tell us more about them. Um, and we have other school of thoughts that perhaps don't know the importance mm. of um, remembering them. It's like once they're dead, they're dead. And, um, and actually something that my own mother said to me before she passed away, she used to have this practice of doing Thursday night du'as, and she'd say, remember me on this night. Yes. Um, and I had quite a few odd experiences after she passed away that was almost like reminding me to keep that, uphold her request. So would you please share with us the importance, the practices of Ahl Bayt, the, yeah. you know, the fiqh, what, what should we be doing for our a deceased? Ahsetu. Uh, first of all, thank you for uh, once again inviting me back to your show. And I would like to uh, take this opportunity to uh, pay my condolences to the awaited Imam and Savior and to the Ulama and Muraj Abdeen and to Mu'mineen and Mu'minat, wherever they may be, for the uh, sad occasion of the martyrdom of Sayyidah Zainab, uh, daughter of Amir al Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib. Uh, again, uh, Islam as a whole generally has uh, put a lot of emphasis on the ziyara of Qubur or visiting the mm -hmm. or remembering the deceased or the the uh, family members or the friends or the community members who have um, who were with us and amongst us and have passed away uh, because the emphasis has been, has been put there specifically uh, in the books of jurisprudence uh, and explaining why because people think that once they leave this world mm. or once their family members leave this world, that's, it, that's the end of their life. Mm. Uh, because they are not around them, because they cannot see them or speak to them, that means that they, they do not have a connection mm. with them mm. anymore. And, and that is uh, unfortunately a misconception. It is wrong. Because uh, as we read in the Holy Quran, mm -hmm. and as we have received from the Ahlul Bayt alayhum as -salam, that this life is the temporary life and the hereafter is the everlasting life. Mm. And everything in this life is a, is a preparation for us to move on to the, to the other life. So all that has happened is that this deceased has mm. lived their life mm. and has prepared themselves for, the, for their home, let's say, for, for the everlasting uh, home and their position, inshallah, in the paradise. So uh, the fact that they have left this world and that we've gone through that process of preparing them for, uh, for burial and buried them and they, they have received and uh, have been given their final resting place, mm -hmm. it does not mean that we forget them. Yeah. It's, it's exactly the opposite. Uh, Ahlul Bayt alayhum as specifically the Holy Prophet of Islam, uh, he himself through visiting the graves of the Shuhada of Uhud for example, mm. Rasulullah used to visit the Shuhada, mm. the martyrs of Uhud, the Battle of Uhud. Do we know what he did there? Where or where? Why? Do you know what he did when he visited? Yeah, there? he used to go and stand there, um, recite verses of the Holy Quran, mm. and pray for them, mm. because they themselves, the the deceased, can hear, mm. they can acknowledge mm. the fact that there is a person standing on my grave and reciting, for example, or sending me the thawab and the blessings of a verses of the Holy Quran or mm. uh, doing dua for me. Because they are in, in dire need of our dua and our supplication. So it is very important. This is, of course, the school of thought of Ahlul Bayt. And this is generally what Rasulullah, the Prophet of Islam, has uh, mm. taught his companions, okay. and this is uh, widely practiced, not only mm. by the followers of Ahlul Bayt, salam, but also by uh, followers of other schools of thought as well. And you said that the, the, mm. they are in need of our supplications and du'as. Will, will, will our supplications change anything for them? Of course. They themselves are not here to 
to engage in activities or in, in supplications or in acts of worship that will increase their yeah. thawab and their position. So, but it doesn't mean that when I do something for them, it will not reach them and it, it, it will not help them. Mm. As we have uh, Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam, peace be upon her, uh, spoke to Ali ibn Abi Talib before. This is her final uh, uh, wishes on her deathbed. She said, Ya Ali, wa'ahad qabri bi tilawat al-Qur'an. SubhanAllah. Oh Ali, come to visit my grave site and recite the Holy Qur'an for me. Why? Because she says, because the deceased yastanis or ya'nas bi tilawat qura'at al-Qur'an. Because it eases them in that lonely place, in that place where they have uh, their, uh, they cannot reach their family members. And to some narrations, it's every Thursday night they come to their house or to the way to, to where they used to live, to the, to the place where their family live. And they stand by the door or they stand from a distance and they watch their mm -hmm. family, waiting from their family members to send them a blessing. Even if it's, if it's a box of, of dates, for example. Mm -hmm. Even if it's reciting Surah Al-Fatiha. Because that will benefit them a, a lot. It will turn uh, their graves into a, a piece of paradise. Mm -hmm. Or they will bring that blessing, that thawab that you have sent them, in, in the shape of, a, a, of a, a plate of food, for example. Mm -hmm. So, when we perform an action, um, a deed, a du'a, that's up to the mercy of Allah, it's accepted, right? But when we pray for a deceased person, is that always accepted? Will that benefit definitely reach the, the person? Anything you do, yeah, of course. I mean, because it's for someone else. Mm -hmm. And Allah knows that you are doing this as a, as, as, as a, from a sincere point of view. Mm -hmm. Allah always sends it because you want to help that individual. You're not mm -hmm. doing it for any gain or you won't gain anything no. mm -hmm. by reciting Surah Al-Fatiha or by buying a box of dates or uh, organizing uh, 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 a thawab for the deceased. No. Allah always, even, mm -hmm. let, me, let me say that, Allah is so kind mm -hmm. that even if I wasn't sincere, but I was walking in the streets and I just remembered someone and I said, oh, I miss that person. Mm -hmm. Or that person was a good person. He had good akhlaq. He had good morals. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the malaika, will translate that into mm -hmm. a good deed and send it. Yeah. So, the, the, I mean, you mentioned the Prophet actually physically going to the graves. Yes. Um, for the martyrs of Badr. Yes. Um, Uhud. Uh, sorry, Uhud. Um, but here in London, for example, um, there is a grave site that it's a Muslim gravesite because there's obviously there's mm. there's some question marks over where you can actually bury a person. Um, obviously, ideally, you want to take them to more spiritual land like um, like uh, Wadi Salam, for example, in Najaf, or maybe even Karbala as well. But for some reasons, you know, anyone who passes away within our families in London and you can't take them back to their homeland, they get buried here in in London, quite far away. Now, the the the, the issue is. Number one, if it's far away, can we still get the same level of thawab, for example, if you send um, prayers or supplications towards them? Or is it better to go and visit them? Even if, I, if, if it is better to go and visit them, what if I don't have any loved ones here and they're all in, in Iraq? Is it, is it the same? That's why I'm saying. Well, according to the will of the, of the deceased, it's best to follow the will and see where they have chosen to be buried. Mm. And again, if it's possible, well, we, try, we should try our best to accommodate for that wish. If they have uh, chosen to be buried in, for example, Karbala or Najaf or other other uh, holy sites, then we should uh, accommodate because uh, Karbala or Najaf or these holy sites they have their own uh, special effects on on, on the deceased. Mm. In the riwayat and in the hadith it says whoever is buried, for example, in Najaf, they will not. Uh, face questioning, for example, mm. severe questioning by Munkar and Nikir. Or for example, whoever is buried in Karbala, they will not experience the Qabr, the squeezing of the grave. Mm. Because of the holiness and the position of the Imam, the uh, mm. infallible person buried in that location. Mm. Of course, again, there are other hadiths and narrations by Ahl al-Bayt that there are angels, even if one was to be mm. buried in a faraway distance, 
uh, in a different location, in the, for example, in a Western society, in a mm. Western country, for, sorry, the, there is malaika and naqala, they, they take mm. uh, the, the deceased and they bury them, okay. for example, in Najaf or in Karbala. Because mm. I asked this, and sorry, Zara, because mm. I asked this because there are some families here um, who, for example, let's just say the husband passed away. Um, is it fair that in the will he says, I want to be buried in Karbala, for example, but is it fair on the family members, especially the children growing up wanting to visit their dad, mm. um, is it fair for them to be buried in Najaf um, and then being far away so that they can't mm. really see the grave of the, of the dad? Yeah, or, this, this as you mentioned, the, the, the naqala, for example, that could play there a very is a, important role. There is a religious discussion to that yeah. and there is a social discussion yeah. to that. Yeah. The religious discussion is that we have to honor the will. Mm. Mm. A will is a will. This is what they are not there anymore to defend them or to express their wishes, yeah, yeah. and they've expressed their wishes in that will. So we have to honor it. But again, here arises the the question whether um, they they are going to be far away from us, mm -hmm. and we are not going to be able to visit them. Here, if the person that has written or has asked in their will to be buried in Karbala, for example. They would usually say, if possible. Mm. Mm. If not possible, I'm happy to be buried, for example, in London. But you know, I, I just thought about something there, that say, for instance, your family are here, so my father's buried abroad, and I haven't been able to visit the grave decades now, and it really upsets me, it's not easy for me to go. So, if it was a holy city, and um, your family don't see you for 20, 30, 40, maybe 50, 60 years, and then everyone else dies, wouldn't you rather be in Karbala eternally, where yeah. then, if you had that opportunity, than to be buried in the, you know, it's, it's about the soul's benefit as much as it is we're, so we're selfishly say, for ourselves. Yeah, what we're saying is that the Seder is saying that there's angels uh, the, that, that will, that, still take, that will yeah. take the soul and be buried in, mm. in, in depending on mm. your own deeds, if you're a true Shia and so on and so yeah. forth. Yes, so there's a criteria course. for acceptance yeah. yes. to be transferred. Of course, I mean, it's, it's everyone's wish to be buried next to Imam Hussein or yeah. in the land of, of uh, Wadi Salam next to Amir al there are there are good yani, benefits to that. Mm. Yes. But if it doesn't mean that being buried, for example, in London or in New York or in Toronto mm. doesn't yeah. mean uh, that I'm yes, not a believer or I'm not a lover yeah. of so, Ali Ali Also on that point, I mean, the reason why we visit the grave is not because of this, the physical body there, because the body's going to decay, yeah, it's right? Gone, yeah. It's the symbol that this person, who this person is, uh, a loved one, for example. Yeah. So I could, I could, I'm, I'm sure that I could, for example, sit down in my own home and remember the deceased and send the supplications to the deceased. It would mm. be the same thing as physically going to the grave. Would it yeah, be the same thing? Unfortunately, this is uh, a misconception that has been uh, uh, raised by mm. uh, some, let's say, extreme mm. uh, individuals who come from different uh, schools of thought. Okay. That they say it is outside Islam or it's, uh, it's outside the, the religion. Mm -hmm. to visit the graves or even remember the deceased because part of their practices is that they as soon as they bury their loved one that's it that's the yeah. end and they close yeah. the doors and don't even allow people to come and yeah. pay their respects for the passing away that deceased and this is exactly opposite how the uh, how the holy prophet Rasulullah yeah. was doing yeah. he used to go um, take care of the, the the person clean it clean the grave uh, yeah of course mm -hmm. um, and he used to walk in the procession uh, ceremony of, mm. of burial of, of, for example, his companions. Mm. And he used to participate in the burial. And he used to go and stand on their graves. Mm. And he would, used it, would it be wrong to create a symbol of a grave in, for example, a home? If, for example, he's buried in Najaf. But obviously, I can't visit Najaf. I know it's a bit, it's a bit too much. But I'm saying in, t in terms no, of no, it's an interesting uh, idea. Like, like have, creating yeah. like a almost like a mihrab, um, and 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 whenever I want to remember my father, for example, I'll go to this it's specific not wrong. area. It's not wrong. Um, I know some some um, communities they do this for Ahl al Bayt They yeah. designate a room or they designate a corner. Mm. Yeah. And they say that this is a place where we we highly respect and and because it's been dedicated to Ahl al Bayt Ali Muslim, we stand yeah. there. We do the our ziyara. We visit Ahl al Bayt as if we are standing in yeah. the front. Yeah. And there's nothing totally nothing wrong with with mm. doing it for your beloved individuals. You do you put uh, 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 the Holy Quran. You put their image. You put yeah. uh, things that remind you. Of of Akhir, anything that reminds you hmm. of death and Akhir is, is, is uh, widely um, advised upon by Ahlul Bayt mm -hmm. because they always say but either by 
reciting verses of the Holy Quran that speak about death or uh, going to cemeteries and burial sites or uh, organizing majalis. Yeah. Uh, because uh, uh, unfortunately, some organize a fatha or a remembrance event mm. um, immediately after the deceased has passed away mm. Mm. or one week after or the 40th. And then that's the day forget. No, Ahl al Bayt mm. say, organize a majlis. Okay. In honor of the dead. In honor of the yeah. of the deceased. Remembrance of Fatima al Zahra. Remembrance of Imam Hussein. Now we are uh, commemorating the death of Sayyidina Zainab alayhi salam, mm. who commemorated the 40th of her brother Imam Hussein mm. alayhi salam and went all the way to visit Imam Hussein for three days mm. in, yeah. in Karbala. So Ahl al Bayt teach us. Fatima al Zahra alayhi salam, she used to visit the grave of her father. She used to visit the grave of her uncle Hamza. And she even took uh, uh, some soil from the grave of Hamza and turned that mm. into a, a prayer bead. Mm. She used to do tasbih to Zahra from the, the soil of the grave of Hamza, alayhi salam. So Islam as a whole, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the Holy Quran, um, there are many, many uh, verses and uh, uh, riwayat from Ahlul Bayt that encourage what we need to remember the deceased yeah. and their dead. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, I was just going to say we've come to the end, but in response to your question, I know some people plant trees and build water wells in the name of their deceased, but if, for instance, if you had something that's more local, you could just put a, a bush or something in the garden. Maybe, maybe yeah, something. Maybe. Quite a, something yeah, symbolic. again, something symbolic. Again, that will help other nature, but would maybe. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. this yeah. is my yeah. mind thinking yeah. about. Um, I think on that note, so it's, a, yeah. it's, a, it's a very good note to, to end on. Uh, and of course, just to echo the words, of course, we send our condolences. On, on the topic of death, we send our condolences to the whole Muslim world on the passing or the martyrdom of um, Sayyidah Zainab alayhi salam. So if there's no more further thoughts from, mm. from Zara or the Sayyid, inshallah, we'll definitely see you in the next episode of uh, Morning Barakah. Um, and may your days be, be blessed. Inshallah, have a great weekend. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.